Hello, everyone. My name is Ke Ming. I am a graduate student at the University of California, Berkeley. And in this talk, I am presenting a new method that enables automated and real-time inference of binary microlensing observations, which is a unique method for exoplanet discovery and characterization. So first of all, what is microlensing? As the name suggests, the gravitational field of stars can act as magnifying glasses. As you're seeing in this animation, when a foreground star, which is a star that's closer to us, appears to pass in front of a background star, the gravitational field of the foreground star can act to magnify light from the background star. And the closer they get, the higher the magnification is. In the case of a single lens star and a single source star, the time series of the total brightness, which is called the light curve, would be symmetrical and described by a very, simply, very simple analytic formula. But when the lens star is either a binary system of, of two stars or a system of an exoplanet and its host star, which we're particularly interested in, the modeling of the light curve becomes much more complicated. Um, astronomers acquire light curve of stars with time domain surveys, which uh, where we take images of the same parts of the sky at a certain cadence, which is what you see to the upper left. Then the binary, the brightness of every star in the image are measured, which produces the light curve as you see in the lower left. The upper right diagram explains this example of binary microlensing of, uh, light curve uh, to the bottom of both figures. For both lenses, there are these closed contours called the caustic which places that causes infinite magnification and which causes the spikes that you see in the light curves. Apart from this delta function magnification, you can also imagine there being a continuous magnification map in the same diagram. And the light curve basically depends on the trajectory on this uh, magnification map. So there are basically two categories of binary and microlensing parameters being inferred on those that determine the binary lens configuration, um, which is in red, and those that determine the source trajectory relative to the stationary lens, which is marked in blue. While the physical model is very straightforward, the inverse problem inferring the physical parameters from observation, basically the eight parameters that I showed here, um, it's anything but easy, mostly because the light curve is hypersensitive to the binary, to the two binary lens parameters, S and Q, that determines the magnification map, where a small change in S and Q could make the light curve look completely different. So I will first, first briefly touch on the current approach of doing binary microlensing inference in a classic Bayesian inference setup. We have the observation the simulator, which pr provides the likelihood function, and the prior. For binary microlensing, blindly running MCMC chains seeded from the prior is typically, typically hard to converge, mostly because of the reasons that I just mentioned, which causes the likelihood surface to be full of local minima. Instead, what people usually do is they first try to find, a, find approximate solutions with a grid search over two binary lens parameters, binary separation and mass ratio, um, just as you see to the right, which is color coded by the log likelihood. In this case, four degenerate solutions are found. And from these sol approximate solutions, one will be able to run MCMC to first refine the solutions, then acquire the posteriors, and finally find the best fit model. Apart from the fact that this approach is very computationally expensive because the forward model is very slow, it also requires domain experts to supervise the grid search and MCMC process. This scalability issue creates a lot of challenge on the scale of the next generation microlensing survey with the Roman Space Telescope, which is expected to discover thousands of binary microlensing events. Uh, compare, this compares to the dozens of events, binary events, I mean, analyzed so far. Um, so under our new approach, we first make a reasonable number of simulations with parameters drawn from the prior. 
Then we use a neural density estimator or NDE to learn the posterior P of theta given X as a distribution parameterized by the observation. A neural density estimator is basically a neural network that is capable of learning distributions from samples of that distribution, which in this case are the theta and x pairs. During inference, because we can get rid of the slow simul simulator, we can use the learned distribution to generate millions of discrete posterior samples in seconds for any observation. This allows for real-time and automated inference. We call this approach neural amortized posterior. Amortization means all the simulation cost is paid upfront before inference of any particular event, which is what allows for the order of magnitude speed up. Here is a schematic illustration of our inference architecture. A featureizer network processes the light curve into a 256 dimensional feature vector that captures the necessary information. The feature vector then parameterizes a neural, net, net, a neural density estimator called a masked autoregressive flow or MAF. The MAF then transforms a mixture of Gaussian based distribution into the posterior so that one can generate discrete posterior samples simply by sampling from the a mixture of Gaussian based distribution. The flexibility of the MAF as well as the mixture of Gaussian based distribution allows our approach to naturally adapt to multimodal or degenerate solutions. Briefly, I'll mention that for data set for training set generation, we first simulated 1 million magnification curves under Roman's noise and cadence properties. We then fitted each one of them with a single lens model and used the 30%, which are inconsistent with a single lens fitting as the training set. We infer on eight standard binary lensing, binary lensing parameters, which uh, does not include higher order effects such as parallax. Now with three examples, I highlight the ability of our method to capture degenerate solutions. First of all, we try to reproduce the same fourfold posterior in Troy 2012, uh, which you just saw uh, in the last slides. Um, uh, try to reproduce that with a similar light curve. The corner plot that you're seeing shows the 2D marginal distribution of the neural posterior. It turns out that the neural density estimator is finding not four, but five solutions. In particular, the local A solution in Troy 2012 was broken up into three separate solutions with two different binary mass ratio solutions and three different tra trajectory angle of approach solutions. Um, the three caustics are shown to the lower right. Um, and on the other hand, the local D solution um, uh, is missing from our posterior because log Q greater than zero is outside the prior used to build our training set. And I also want to point out the fact that the inferred light curves or light curve realizations from the solutions are almost all identical to the input light curve shown in the middle panel, um, which reflects the accuracy of the posteriors. And in this example, a resonant caustic event is simulated with S equals one and Q equals five times 10 to the minus four. Um, the corner plot clearly shows a bimodal solution with a degenerate solution as less than one with a closed topology. The input light curve is shown in the upper right corner together with the two inferred light curves. As you can see, all three are hardly distinguishable. Uh, below the light curve, you can see the trajectories and the caustics of the two solutions. And to the bottom left, you see the magnification maps of the two solutions, which shows that the closed and resonant topologies cause similar demagnification patterns um, on the trajectory. Here is a central caustic passing event, which shows a classic closed wide degeneracy where a wide configuration with binary separation S can result in a very similar light curve compared to a closed configuration with binary separation one over S. Apart from the S and one over S behavior, 
we notice that u naught, t naught, and te, which the, uh, which uh, are parameters of the trajectory, also exhibits bimodality. This is because we are using the center of mass coordinate system, but the caustic center is offset from the center of mass by a small amount for the wide solution. Again, the inferred light curves are hardly distinguishable from the ground truth. In summary, we're formulating inference as a conditional distribution modeling problem where a neural density estimator learns from in-distribution samples generated from the physical simulator. This allows for real-time inference and can be easily adapted to include higher order effects such as parallax or to more complicated systems like triple lens events, which allows one to discover more than one planet in a single observation. And finally, downstream MCMC can be used to further validate or refine the neural posterior. And finally, a short conference paper um, of our work is available on archive and will be updating with a full journal paper soon. So keep an eye on that. Thank you.